Hey there YouTube, I'm Ikitsu, this is Ikitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome to a little bit of Surviving Mars. So, this is going to be a really in-depth guide to this game, and the reason that I delayed putting this out for a while was because, honestly speaking, um, the game was missing one feature that had been promised in a patch uh, that just came out recently, and that is that you can now interconnect your um, domes, which means that your colony is now one thriving sort of city, as opposed to before where your colony was a bunch of interconnected small little villages, uh, which didn't quite feel right, and this feels a lot better the way that it currently is with everything being able to interconnect and people able to interact with multiple different places, and you being able to really set things up as specialized zones in a way that you couldn't before. So in any event, let's start by talking a little bit about this game in um, sort of sense of the different ways that you can play it, because that's going to really dictate how you take this advice. So. This is a fairly open-ended game. There's not really any proper way to approach it. Um, you can go about it completely wrong and end up with a colony that just fails and you have to start over again. That is possible. Um, it's not one of those games where it's really easy to sort of recover from a really bad start or when you do something really stupid and everything uh, goes to waste. There is the possibility that you end up in a deficit, you end up with no resources, and everything just starts decaying. Um, so it is possible to lose this game ultimately, essentially. But, um, broadly speaking, if as long as you're not losing, you can do pretty much anything you'd like. Um, one of the ways that you can play this game is the score attack. You can see this difficulty bonus multiplier in the top here. Um, basically, if you want to go for the high score in this game, you go for as high a multiplier as you reasonably can get things. Uh, you try and accomplish certain achievements and milestones. Once you've gotten those milestones, you're, by day 100, it's tallied up and you're given a score that gets multiplied by the difficulty bonus. So. Honestly speaking, this isn't really the style of gameplay for me. Um, if you really are looking for that insane challenge of uh, 900 and... I think you can get to almost a thousand difficulty. Um, so if, if you really feel as though that's an interesting way to play this game, that is an option that is going to be there. But broadly speaking, uh, the stuff I'm going to be talking about is going to still apply for that sort of thinking. You're just going to have to go very slowly and think uh, each of your steps through a little bit more carefully than I'm willing to or really care to. Also, you're going to have a pile of extra disasters, which could randomly ruin one of your playthroughs, which, of course, is never really that fun. Um, the next style is just Sim City. You build up your city, uh, your colony, your domes, in whichever way you think is most aesthetically pleasing. You have different blocks and different areas for people to live in, and you just try and grow it as much as you want to. And this is, honestly speaking, the way that I like playing it. Um, if you're going to be playing this route, what I would definitely recommend is choosing the easiest settings possible. Um, and then installing a mod that guarantees certain breakthrough technologies. There are certain technologies in this game that will only appear during some playthroughs and will not appear in other playthroughs. And some of them are core to building the city that you might want to build. Uh, for example, if I want to have a playthrough where I've got lots of uh, the mineral extractors, I don't have people working in those mines, then I'm going to need a specific uh, AI extractor technology that does not appear in every game. Uh, I'm going to need the um, to inspire architecture technology breakthrough to be able to build the oval domes, which are a very interesting thing to be able to build. And they're also one of the sort of denser things that you can build. You can build these a lot closer together um, than you could the mega domes. Um, so if you want to sort of play out a SimCity style game, you're going to want to find a way to get those uh, breakthrough technologies uh, so that you can guarantee it. There is a way to do it without cheating, uh, if you do view that as, as, as whatever. Uh, you basically are allowed to pre-scan the entire map if you do certain settings, and then you can just sort of go around and scan everything um, with your Science Explorer. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later, but you can then figure out what breakthroughs are on your map, and then you can reset the map, and then make sure that you get the correct breakthroughs in whatever order you happen to need them in. And this is a way to make sure that you get the, the breakthrough technologies, and if you don't, you just restart the game until you do. I don't think that this is a good use of your time, though. I would highly recommend using a mod instead. Um, the next way to do it is you play it for the mystery. Mysteries are essentially small story modes. They'll sort of take you through an event that occurs in your colony from one period to another, and generally speaking, these don't show up in the very, very early game. You're not going to be getting screwed over by Mars Gate right off the bat. You're going to have some time to develop your colony, get your people um, prepared and ready for this, get your resources set before you're hit by this, but if you're well prepared and you uh, do a good job, you're going to be in a position where your colony is able to respond to and deal with this. But um, 
if, if you don't know what the story uh, line is, sometimes it can be tricky. For example, if you take The Last War and you don't learn how to build the laser defense grid or you don't ha have the ability to build that for whatever reason because it gets pushed way into the tech tree uh, by the randomization process, then you could end up in a situation where you can't defend yourself during the last war. Um, and that could be really catastrophic. And also, if you're not able to sort of build things quickly enough, that could also end up resulting in uh, your colony being overrun by immigrants, which is not really great in Mars, where you can't really just stay on the outside of things. You can't just build a house on the outside. You have to build new domes. Um, so there's lots of different things that can happen in these that could go wrong. But broadly speaking, you play this, you listen to the story, you read all the text, you sort of figure out what you would do in those situations because you're given dilemmas and choices, and you hope that you can make it through the event in one piece. Um, I think that there's a lot of interesting uh, replayability in that because the scenarios that I've done so far are all pretty interesting. Um, Going back from there, um, the last way that I would say that you would potentially want to play this game is sort of roleplay, and I think that this is another really interesting way to play this game. You pick essentially a mission sponsor, a commander profile, a colony logo, and a mystery, uh, and game rules to sort of create a scenario in your head um, based around what you're thinking a mission to Mars might look like or what you would want it to be, um, and you build it from there. And that, I think, is going to be one of those ways that you could really make this a more personalized experience. And it's where the open-ended nature of this game really uh, becomes quite nice. So let's talk a little bit about the mission sponsors. Your mission sponsor is going to be your most meaningful choice in terms of how easy or difficult the game is. The, the mission sponsors, I find, are probably the most potent uh, indicator of what you're going to be in for, um, along with the map. So. The first one is the International Mars Mission. These guys are listed as very easy, and they're the only faction that are listed as such. They are the extreme end of being easy to use. So if you're going to play this for SimCity, I recommend using these guys because it lets you skip past a lot of the resource gathering, and it lets you get down to the city building element of the game without having to go through a lot of the other stuff. Um, so let's talk about what these different stats mean. Starting rockets is how many rockets you have available. This is a resource that you use to send resources from Earth to Mars and vice versa. They're also used to send colonists from Earth to Mars as well. And it's an important thing to be able to do this. Um, oftentimes you're not going to have enough resources from your first few shipments from your rockets to Mars. You're going to need to send it back get more shipments. If you have more rockets, you're going to be able to send more shipments to Mars without having to refuel, and uh, it's going to be a, a fairly useful resource. Now, honestly speaking, I find that you can get by just fine with two, and I find that you rarely need more than three. Um, so the starting rockets of four for the International Mars mission is a little bit wasted. You don't need four of them. Um, the funding that they start off with is 30 billion. Um, that is an extreme amount of starting money. You're going to be able to do a lot with that uh, compared to what you would be able to do with any other faction in the game. Like ridiculous amounts of uh, work can be done with that. Um, the research per soul, every uh, sort of solar cycle in this game is referred to as a soul. It seems to represent both a year and a day. It's kind of wonky in that sort of sense there, but um, every sort of uh, solar cycle you get one um, you get the amount of research. It's not actually all at once at the end of the day or anything. It's actually trickled in throughout the entire day. But this is your passive research bonus, and you're going to need this to get your research done. You're going to be doing most of your research once you get your research labs up and running with the colonists in them. But you start off with a small passive amount that's going to make it a little bit nicer for your colonists once they do arrive. Um, rare metals price. You can extract rare metals from Mars and then ship them back to Earth for a profit. This indicates how much money you're given per ton of rare metals from Mars to Earth. Um, 25 million is about the standard, so um, generally speaking, that's what you can expect. You can bring 30, million, or 30, 30 tons worth of rare metals from Mars to Earth, so quite a lot of resources and a decent amount of money, about 75 million for this faction. Starting applicants is how many people are in the pool. Um, you're never going to send 200 applicants to Mars. The reason that a larger applicant pool is actually useful in this game is because a larger applicant pool guarantees or, or increases the odds that you're going to get people with very good qualities coming to Mars. And you do want people coming over with really high quality qualities because it's going to make your colony function a lot more efficiently. It's going to prevent them from having lots of flaws that drag your colony down and prevent sort of really bad shit cascades that can happen when you've got lots of people with terrible disabilities that are dragging down everybody else's morale. Um, 
The next thing here is the thing that's unique to every faction here. Um, so for the International Mars mission, uh, their large rocket payload, they can carry 70,000 kilograms instead of the standard amount. Um, their colonists never get Earth sick. Earth sickness is a type of sanity break. Uh, when your sanity gets low enough, some colonists will have a, an Earth sickness event where they will immediately stop working and they will board the nearest rocket for Earth uh, as soon as they're capable of it. Um, they get food supply from passenger rockets increased by times 10 which means that uh, when you ship, normally when you ship a group of colonists to Mars from Earth, they come with a, a ton of food per person. So 12 colonists being sent to Mars will come with uh, 12 tons of food. This means that they instead bring 120 tons of food, which you'll notice exceeds the large rocket's payload capacity, but whatever the hell. And lastly, the rockets automatically synthesize fuel, which is a kind of a cheat way of doing things because normally speaking, you need to build fuel refineries which require water to produce it. Um, so this is just a sort of easier way to fill your rockets up um, really quite quickly. Um, so this is an extreme example. These guys are way, way, way stronger than every other faction and they're designed for sort of new playthroughs or people who don't want to consider the sort of early setup stages because once you get deep into the game, the differences between the International Mars mission and other factions, like once you've spent all the money, once you've sent the shipments, once you've got your colonists all in place and you're using naturally born Martians instead of colonists from Earth, you're no longer really worried about any of the statistics that these guys provide. These are early game statistics to mid game statistics. Um, and once you've set sort of everything up, the only thing that's going to matter is the small passive bonus at the bottom there, which rarely is too big. Next up is the USA. Um, these guys are sort of more standard. They start with three rockets, which I think is a great number of rockets. They start with eight billion in funding, which is a pretty high amount. Uh, they start with 300 research per soul, 25 million per resource, only 100 starting applicants though, and they get larger rocket payloads as well. Now, one of the nice things about them is that they will periodically get a small amount of extra money. I think it was like a million a day or something. It's a pretty small amount of money. But this can help you out if you're in a bit of a pinch, and it does mean that, passively speaking, you'll be able to trade more with Earth. Um, Blue Sun Corporation is sort of the more extreme uh, end of the capitalist there. They start off with two rockets, which is good enough under most circumstances. They start off with $10 billion in funding, which is a good amount. They don't get very much research per soul, only 100 uh, the rare metal price is the highest in the game at 30 million uh, per unit, and they only have 100 starting applicants. You can buy more applicants with funding, but I find that that's never a useful thing. You rarely ever need to do that unless you're really just picking for like celebrities or something like that. Um, the original rockets are significantly cheaper. Again, two is enough to scrape by, but this does mean that if you really need a third rocket, you can get one with these guys pretty cheaply. Probes can discover deep rare metal deposits. This is not actually a very useful trait. Uh, you're going to be able to get deep scanning probes pretty quickly into the game, and once you do that, you will be able to find the deep rare metal deposits without that. Um, the bonus tech is the deep metal extraction, so they can actually make use of the deep metal. Um, this is actually fairly useful. Deep metal extraction is fairly deep into the uh, is fairly far into the tech tree, so often you'll know where the deposits are well, well, well in advance of actually knowing how to uh, exploit them. Uh, so this is a helpful sort of uh, bonus there. For China, oops. Um, for China, you start off with three rockets and eight billion in funding, similar to the United States. They get a little bit less research per soul at 200. Rare metal price is the same at 25, and starting applicants is higher at 200. Their passenger rockets can carry uh, 10 additional colonists, which means that instead of bringing um, 12 across, uh, they can bring 22. Now, you can increase this with techs as well, but this is not really a that useful a thing. And if you're doing a single rocket uh, run, there, there's a challenge where you only bring one rocket to Mars, um, then this can be a useful thing. Um, or sorry, you only bring one passenger rocket to Mars, in which case the fact that you can bring 22 instead of 12 does make a difference, but for everyone else that really isn't a huge deal. The other thing, applicants are generated twice as fast. This is actually a really good bonus because it means that you're much, much, much more likely to get really high quality applicants with lots of good quality traits and with none of the negative traits, and that way you'll be able to like ship off more celebrities and stuff like that into space. Um, India, I actually really like India's bonuses here. Uh, they start off with three rockets, which is quite good. They start off with seven billion in funding, which is pretty good. Their research per soul is low at 100. Uh, their rare metal price is a little bit lower at 24 million per unit, and their uh, starting applicants is pretty high at 150. Um, they do, however, have two unique things going for them. They start off with all buildings cost reduced by 20%, which is a 
really interesting bonus there. It means that they're going to be able to spam out buildings into the game a little bit more cheaply, which means that they're going to be able to do a little bit more. Um, next up, they got low G engineering, which unlocks the medium dome. This is what makes them really interesting is that they never have to build that small initial dome, which I find to be quite weak. Combining the fact that they can start off with a medium dome uh, with their minus 20% in cost for buildings means that they can actually kind of afford that as well. So you can build your first dome as a medium dome, um, which means, in, you know, these things are great. Like medium domes are just big enough for you to be able to fit everything that you need inside of them. Um, and they're deep enough into the tech tree that often you will not have access to medium domes by the time you get to your first um, dome uh, being built. Um, next up is Europe. Europe is the uh, technology faction. Start off with two rockets there. Uh, they start off with 6 billion in funding, 40, 400 research per soul, which is of course the highest in the game. Uh, the rare metal price is quite low at 22 million per unit, and they only have 100 starting applicants. They start off with five extra technologies. Now, this doesn't mean that they start with those technologies researched. You still have to spend the time to research them. What they have got is more of the tech web revealed, so they're able to see what techs are available uh, further along, and they can skip the first tier if they want to start researching on the second tier right away. Um, in addition, they gain a little bit of funding every time a tech is researched, and they gain double if it's breakthrough tech. Uh, Europe is a lot of fun to play, I find, actually. Spacey, this is basically SpaceX, it's Elon Musk's company essentially. They start off with five rockets, their difficulty is normal. Um, they start off with six billion, they get 200 research per soul. Their rare metal price is low at 20 million per unit, and their starting applicants is low at 75. Um, the drone hubs are a building that essentially does work. This is a fairly easy to ignore bonus because you can pretty easily ship more drones from Earth to Mars. They do cost quite a lot of money though, so you could save some additional resources by taking this. And, and as well, they start off with 50% cheaper advanced resources. So the 50% cheaper advanced resources, like you're going to be spending a lot of your money on advanced resources. So this means that Spacey is capable of essentially using that 12 million available to, or sorry, 6 million uh, billion available to actually buy 12 billion worth of stuff. Uh, it's a fairly effective bonus, and it means also that the rare metal price looks lowest. If you're using the rare metals to fund um, advanced resources, then you're actually able to essentially get 40 million per unit, which is the highest in the game if you're thinking of it in that sort of way there. So they're kind of an interesting one. They sort of rely on efficient trades uh, for specific resources, where as the Blue Sun Corporation, you might want to use that money to buy factories and stuff like that. For Spacey, you definitely buy the raw resources. Church of the New York, these guys have one starting rocket, and that actually is very, very difficult uh, to make work properly. Um, there are ways to get around that. Uh, you could buy another rocket, or you could choose the rockets here for your, um, your whatever it is. Um, but starting off with one rocket is quite a big weakness in my opinion. They only have 4 billion in funding, which is the lowest in the game. They only have 100 research per soul, which is actually a boost of what it started off as. They used to have zero. Um, their rare metal price is low at 20 million uh, per unit, and their starting applicant pool is 120. Now, all colonists have the religious trait. This is actually a very strong trait. Um, religious people in this game will never commit suicide and have higher base morale. Um, their birth rate is doubled, which doesn't really matter that much. And the hydroponics, uh, hydroponic farms uh, performance reduced by 50%. This isn't actually that big of a drawback. Uh, you, generally speaking, will not have to build that many hydroponic farms, if any. Um, Usually you'll be able to get to the farm tech quite quickly, even with the Church of the New Ark, or the Fungus Farm, one of the two. And either of them will be a good replacement for the uh, hydroponic farms, even if you're not playing as these guys, just because of how terrible the hydroponics farms are. Russia, uh, they start off with two rockets, just enough to get by. They start off with five billion in funding, which is quite low. Research for Sol is 200. Rare metal price is only 22 million, and they start off with 100 um, applicants. Now, what's nice about these guys is that the bonus tech field extractors um, is quite nice. Uh, it's a good way to get more resources quite quickly. Field extractors upgrade is free. You don't have to pay the polymers cost to get that upgrade. And the fuel refinery prefab costs 50% less. So all of this means that they're able to get fuel slammed down quite quickly and quite cheaply, and then use that to produce fueled extractors, which they get the upgrade up for free. So you can just extract resource much, resources much, much more quickly as Russia. Uh, which is a pretty good perk. Now, honestly speaking though, they are still quite a difficult faction, but I don't think that their listing as the most difficult faction in the game is really warranted. I do think that the Church of the New Ark is actually worse than Russia, um, but they're honestly speaking not that bad. Um, 
Once you've gotten past a certain point in the game, which one of these you pick isn't going to matter tremendously. Um, the only one with a persistent bonus that's useful into the late, late, late game is the Church of the New Ark, which might be why they're considered to be quite strong there. Um, I would also say that uh, India's bonus remains relevant throughout the game. Everyone else, you largely just pick them so that you can get your colony started off there, or you pick them because it's going to be something thematic or interesting for you. I'm going to click on Europe for now. All right, uh, Commander Profile. So this is the one that you would take if you're playing the Church of the New Ark and didn't want to do anything crazy. You start off with an extra rocket if you want to with the rocket scientist. Uh, the inventor here, drones are gradually optimized to work and construct faster until Sol 100. Essentially, um, the inventor allows you to build things a little bit more quickly and a little bit more efficiently, which uh, can be useful in this game. Broadly speaking, I think that it's better to have well-placed drone hubs and to build lots of drones or to bring lots of drones if you want to have that sort of stuff getting done. Um, autonomous hubs, drone hubs no longer require power or maintenance. This lets you sort of slam down these all over the place. There's another interesting thing about autonomous hubs that's quite good though. If you have autonomous hubs, then you don't have to get that breakthrough tech, which means that that's another open slot for a better breakthrough tech because autonomous hubs is not on the standard tech list. Oligarch is the next one. Um, fuel production increased by 25%. This can be useful, especially if you're playing with someone like Russia. Um, the bonus tech of Arcology is actually a really uh, interesting one. If you're forced to build small domes, you can put an arcology in the center there as the sole uh, residential zone for that um, colony. And it houses quite a large number of people and keeps them very, very happy, which means that even though your small dome is kind of crappy and doesn't have very good utilities or amenities and is crammed with factories and stuff like that, you'll still have a decent number of people living in there that are able to say that they have a good lifestyle, um, which you can't really do with small domes if you're trying to fill it in with other things. Uh, the next one is the Hydro Engineer. I find this to be quite useless under most circumstances. You only get one water deposit revealed, which might be in somewhere stupid that you don't really want to actually colonize near. Um, domes consuming 25% less water is quite nice. Uh, bonus tech of water reclamation. Um, water reclamation is not something you're going to really need in the early game, so I don't think that that's too useful, and you'll be able to tech to it pretty, event pretty much eventually. Uh, it doesn't take too long, generally speaking, to get to. Doctor, minimum comfort required for a birth lord by 15. Uh, I have not had a problem with reducing or increasing the comfort to the point where people will um, generate offspring. Even if I'm using the apartment blocks in, in cheap uh, sort of like style there with uh, limited utilities, I generally find that it's not that difficult. Um, stem reconstruction. I believe this one's also a breakthrough tech. Uh, their colonist lifespan is increased. It's not that useful or relevant of a technology there, uh, but the um, minimum comfort required for birth lord by 15 could be useful if you're having some trouble with that particular element there. Psychologist is quite nice. Uh, recover, recover five additional sanity while resting in their homes, and you can get the sanatorium spire. Um, the behavioral shaping is really not that relevant. You'll get that eventually anyway, and broadly speaking, your first few shipments uh, should not include a lot of people with huge numbers of flaws. Um, so generally speaking, you want to focus on the uh, additional sanity perk, which is quite good. Politician is the next one. All funding gains are increased by 20%. This has some really good synergy with some factions. Um, especially things like Europe can uh, make good use politician, America can make good use politicians, um, so can the Blue Sun Corporation under some, under some circumstances. Um, it's quite strong. Uh, Martian Patents, reputable tech that grants funding, that one's not that relevant. Uh, you'll get there pretty quickly, generally speaking, and eventually it gets replaced with a stronger version. Futurist, breakthrough techs are researched 3% faster. This is actually quite useless. The number of breakthrough techs that you'll discover throughout a game is limited, and the ones that you actually want is even more limited. Uh, so generally speaking, Speaking, being able to research them a little bit faster does not make a huge difference there. Autonomous sensors, on the other hand, is an extremely powerful ability. Um, it lets you sort of put down sensor towers all over the place really, really quickly without having to pay that much resource to, uh, resource to them or without paying attention to them. And you can spread them out around the map away from your power supplies and away from your logistics uh, and all of that other stuff there. So this is a great way to uncover the entire map uh, really, really quickly. The other way, of course, is to simply use um, drones. Ecologist, service comfort of decorations increased by 10. This is actually a fairly decent bonus. Uh, things like gardens, things like parks, things like lamps and benches and fountains and stuff like that uh, make it so that people using them are happier than they would be if they were using an unupgraded one. And also they get the hanging garden. Um, basically this improves the residence quality of everything in the dome. It's a very, very powerful thing if you're going to have a large residential block to add in a hanging gardens to it. 
Um, next up is the Astrogeologist. This one's completely useless. Start with rare metal deposit revealed. It's a single rare metal deposit. It's not that important to be able to find one. Um, extractor, extractor production increased by 10%. This one's not bad. 10% um, is not a big enough bonus for me to really think that it's worthwhile. Uh, starts with deep scanning. This one's quite good um, if you're not going to be using probes for your deep scanning efforts. Um, this allows you to find the deeper resources and find more anomalies and stuff like that, which is quite a useful skill. Then Rocket Scientist. Uh, the extra rocket is situationally useful. If you've got one or two rockets at the start, you might want to consider taking an extra one. And then you've got the CO2 jet propulsion. This isn't really that relevant. It's not too difficult to unlock it. The tunnels, now that they exist, are something that you can use instead uh, for shorter range ones in any event. And realistically speaking, um, you'll probably have access to this tech before you need it, just from the natural way that the tech progression occurs in this game. Um, so yeah, th those are the different commander profiles. I s selected the psychologist, but it doesn't really matter. You can select whatever colony logo you want. It doesn't matter too much here. Um, for mystery, I recommend not putting it on random. Um, I Generally speaking, uh, just pick whichever one I feel sounds interesting, but I want to know what sort of what I'm going to get into here. I'm going to pick Spheres for this one. Game rules. This, is, again, is primarily if you want to increase the difficulty of your game for one reason or another, um, or if you want to just add in specific scenario type events to your um, game there. Now, honestly speaking, I don't think the prefab colony is really that important. I would not get that even if I wanted to build a city up quickly because I want to be able to build it the way I want to build it. Um, I think that actually, I think this is can be good though if you if you just want to save the resources. I guess it could save a little bit of time there. Uh, basically, it's going to be prefab buildings that you can just sort of slam down and instantly build wherever you sort of need them, but it doesn't feel quite right to do it that way in my opinion. I don't know. It's just 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 sort of my thing there. Um, generally speaking, I don't think you need to have the No Disasters mod or the No Disasters game rule on there. Um, honestly speaking, the, the Disasters in this game are not too bad, and honestly, as well, uh, the meteorite showers are beneficial for you because they'll be able to generate science for you. Alright, so that's uh, the general setup there and everything sort of about it. Um, we'll get into the next parts of it on our next video because this one has been way too in-depth. As I said, we're doing a way too in-depth series on this. So, hope you found this one enjoyable, and of course, as always, hope to see you guys all next time.